Yeah. This power button will be white. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Press it once. It goes green, and then the startup begins. At the back, you have your uh, USB A pin. Yeah. Sorry. That's for data transfer. Fine. And also USB C for any newer uh, data keys, but fine. most will be USB, USB A. Yeah. Fine. Here, if you have an external hard drive, you can plug it in through USB A, yeah. slot it in, and fine. keep it there. Alternatively, you, you don't can have use one. it as a lens cap. Don't have one. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Yeah. So if we go around to the front. When more often than not, this is going to be the orientation for ease of use with seeing the screen and um, arming arming over the patient. Yep. Okay, so quite a lot of times people try and orientate the arm the other way and it will foul on the screen and it will be quite difficult to manipulate the screen around. So more often than not, this will be the orientation that you'll have it. Okay. So this is the, the same size. Can it go like that? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Ah. You can have it. And then you can pull the screen out like so. Yeah, fine. Okay, fine. This, this is the problem I had with it the other day. I think it was orientated the wrong way and hydraulics yeah. was moved. Yeah. Fine, okay. The, instead of the thing over in that side, it would be that side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it normally so takes this side. So, so it's just change side. Yeah, yeah. So kind of, just as a rule, black handle away from the patient. So not... So where, where the patient's there. The patient's yeah. there. So yeah. Usually the black handle's that way. Yeah, or black yeah. yeah. Usually, I'm handling that way. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So it's going to be the first couple of times will be trial and error, but you'll 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 kind of get used to it. So this is what you'll be greeted with. So you'll be asked to select the user on startup, and it's just one user. It's called Zeiss Test at the moment. As we go on, we can add more in, but for now, that's yeah. your basic. And you'll it will come up with this blank screen here. This is your video feed. The way to use this is use it as if you would an iPad, okay? Mm -hmm. Anything you do on an iPad, do on here, and it's quite intuitive, okay? So to bring up the menu, tap anywhere on the screen, and it'll bring up your <coughs> bring up your heads-up display. So in the top here, we've got Home. At any time, if you're in any of the menus, press Home, and you'll come back to this screen. Fine. Here you've got patient data, and this is your user data, so your surgeon individual profile should you have them, okay? If we're going to be recording or taking any photos of anything, I know you go through the stop stat, but if you choose to do it through here, you can add specific patients. So you add patient, and it'll, you can log a separate file, patient name, date of birth, patient ID and comment, so uh, the, the type of procedure, etc. Once that's done, under patient two, you can then save all your specific files, so photos and videos in that specific file, so you don't have a big blend of files, okay? You can export that down here. Once you've taken a photo, you press export, selected, and that will go directly to your USB as a patient file. If you need to import back, it will import back as a patient file, okay? And again, to go back to our main screen. Do you have to have a USB to use yeah. this? You yes. We haven't. So no, no, no. no. Get this, get this, has got an, this has got an internal hard drive, yeah. so it will store it. Mm -hmm. But How what we don't. The storage of it it's one terabyte, drive. but because it's recording HD yeah. video, yeah. it doesn't last that long. Yeah. So, what, what we tend to advise is kind of every two weeks, we'll sift through everything mm -hmm. we don't need or hasn't been transferred or clear. Fine. So, it's kind of a two week cycle. Okay. Because okay. uh, we can't print from this, so you no. need to. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You need to transfer. We need to get somewhere. We need to get the hard drive from IT yeah. that's been encrypted. No, no. Yeah. We have to no, go. We are, we are, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so where do you insert the, uh, the USB? The USB is just at the back. Okay. In this USB port. Okie dokie. So, again, to get back to the main screen, press home and we're back. Okay. This is your quick, quick tools. So, this is your light on and off. That's the one you'll probably use most often. Press it once, it will slide to blue. Press it again, it will turn off. Focus light link, that's a safety feature that's built in. So as you reduce the focal distance to the patient and you find your focus, the closer you get to the patient, the more it will reduce the light yep. just to stop any heat. You can yep. turn that off and override it. So if you're, if you're working at a specific focal distance, if you're not getting the light you want, you turn that off, it will say do you want to click yes and then it will turn off and you have complete independent control over your light then. Turn it back on as a standard, but the, the option is there should you choose to. This is your light percentage. So this is the only parameter out of light focus and zoom that you can control through the screen. Everything else is surgeon controlled. Press it once and it will bring out a tab and you can slide. The surgeon asks for 50% light, slide it to 50 
and it will go to 50, okay? Slide it back, and all you can use the arrows. So does it not, so so is it not preset then? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do we have to do that accordingly? No, no, so the, so the light will, on startup, the light will come on at about 25%, okay? After that, after that it's either surgeon controlled or it's controlled through the screen. Okay, hmm. so here yeah. we've got our focal distance. Yeah. So this is Perfect. the distance that we're actually um, we're actually viewing at. The only thing we can control here is the speed at which that zoom or focus changes. Okay, and it's the same with your zoom. Okay. We can't change the focus or zoom. We can only change the rate right. of change. Okay. Oh. Here on the on the side, you've got a little side menu that you control with this little arrow. This is the most important bit on this menu. This is your system balance. So earlier before you came in, we changed over the optics, etc. In order to balance the microscope when you first start it up, get it in its final position. So if you're gonna change over the arms, obviously change them over. But also, if the arm's in like that, that's not gonna be well balanced because as soon as the surgeon or the assistant yeah. comes out, they yeah. pull it out, all the weight shifted over. Yeah. So it doesn't have to be exactly where you leave it but get it nigh as close as possible to uh, its final setup and then you get quite an accurate balance. To balance it, you press system. It'll say, please do not do this over the patient, obviously. Press start and then it will run through all its motors. So all it's doing is calibrating the motors, takes about 10 seconds. It'll do its little dance and then it's... Um, <laughs> so cute. It's That's gonna so cute. And if it doesn't, okay, what would be the sign that comes up on the screen? Well, I can show you very quickly. If someone was more often than not, if if it's to fail, yeah, it's because something's in the way of it. So if I block it, it'll say stand info, collision or overload, and then all we do, cancel and start, and start again. again. Okay. Because all that's doing is stopping itself breaking the motors, so pushing against something that it's not supposed to. Okay. Or if it hits a patient. <laughs> so, once, so once that's done, we'll move on to the the controls on the actual microscope itself. So on the hand grips, you've got two buttons on the back. Nine times out of ten, you'll be using the bottom button. Yeah. They do the exact same on either side, yeah. much like the other microscope you had. This is all brakes, so it's stand brakes, so it can rotate the arm, and it's the microscope head. The top button, if you press that, you'll notice the stand doesn't move, but just the microscope head moves. Okay. okay. Not many people use that, but the option is there. Okay. okay. It's more common to just move both. Yeah. At the same time. Yeah. So you can press one or both sides. It completely doesn't matter. It's your preference. Yeah. The actual hand grips on the front, so, you've got your programmable buttons here on either side. So you can have photo, video recording, speed focus, whatever you choose up here. These are your little joysticks for the motorized function. Uh, let me check <coughs> no, so you don't have that spec, which is good, makes it a lot simpler. Here you've got your focus and zoom, like on the other microscope, yeah. and down the bottom here, identical on either side is your light plus and minus, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Again, anything, if the rate of change is too fast, just ask for it to be changed through here. Fine, okay? yeah, I get that. If you get confused about what buttons do what at any point, if you've changed around the configuration, you press the hand grip diagram here, and very quickly it'll give you a quick overview of what you've got, okay? Yeah. If you need to change anything, so you can see up here, we've got speed focus and photo on both sides. You go to adjust settings, click on whatever one you want, and you can choose out of this range here, okay? But as a standard, this is what we'll leave it at, okay? Does now, it save the settings? Yes, it does. So, oh. And if they tamper it with it, we'll just revert back to it. No, no, so whatever's, Whatever they tamper it to, yeah. that's what it will stay at. So that's why if, if we are going to change stuff, we'll create new profiles. Okay. Yeah. So this, as a standard, this is to suit everyone. I know, yeah. but would it just revert back to those settings? No. Okay. No. Okay, so here on the side, we can see what we've had before. This is the CMAP for yeah. the connection to your stort system. This is obviously the binoculars that you've been using before. If you're a glasses wearer, I'm sure you're aware of this. I don't want to anyone to be taught to suck eggs, but if you're a glasses wearer, we have them in. If you're a non-glasses wearer, 
we're actually going to roll these caps out until you can see two silver rings and that's just to make sure that you can rest your eyes on the cups and that's going to have a good focus because everyone will have either a natural hover away um, to compensate for or that press. or press yes. so and does a, it go beyond that it, it does, does it but does then it will start to come out if you're doing, right. if you're doing ears you tend to press and doing, yeah. doing scopes you tend to hover yeah very interesting yeah so if you're a glasses wearer and you're leaving your glasses on we're going to have the dark does set to zero yeah. because you've already got your own correction and you're going to have them all the way in because you've already got that distance to your glasses if you're a non-glasses wearer then you have them out to compensate yeah. and if you are a glasses wearer but take them off See. but you know your diopter then we'll actually change the diopter to compensate yeah. for that the only way that doesn't work is if you've got an astigmatism because these can't account for that so can you not just leave it like that and then whoever needs glasses and don't they will still be able to get the, the view that they need or they need to know they need to know glasses as a, as, a, as, a, as a microscope yeah. user, you should yeah. know yeah, this yeah. as a standard. Most, most glasses yeah. Yeah. People yeah. who wear glasses know. Yeah. yeah. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Another one. <laughs> 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 Not yet, not yet, Mr. Kanga. Not yet. There's a, couple of, there's a couple of things just to bear in mind for maintaining the microscope and making sure that you don't have any breakdowns or anything like that, okay? Whenever you move the microscope, even if it's just to push it over slightly, always release the brakes we do not want to be pushing yeah. against the brakes it will move and it will squeak and it will sound horrible but that's not the way to do it and you'll be calling us for that's an engineer nice yeah nice. so anytime you want to move it even if it's a couple that's of millimeters it. just release the brakes first yeah, okay fine. anytime you're moving this arm always close the cup before you move it okay fine. you'll be able to push past it but again you'll find it will go really floppy and really loose and it that's won't be that's a bit red issue fine yep. yeah okay. um, and then apart from that the things to bear in mind is park it before you turn it off because again the motors will lock and you'll you'll have a lot of people saying they start it up and it's got all these warnings saying please call an engineer mm -hmm. and then you ask them why did you move it once it's, and they said yep to get through a doorway we left it like this but we had to pull it down and that's not the way to it's kind of almost like towing an automatic car right. it's, okay. it's not the way to do it okay what's the way okay but other than that i'll show you the park position so the park position so you pull this arm in it will fold over itself okay, nice and flat okay yeah. and then we're going to have the microscope head go over the arm uh, over the screen okay the microscope head goes over Don't the, screen. the screen yeah and that's about, perfect. That's about as compact as it will go, and then you can turn it off. So our problem will be pictures and recording. That's yes. our problem. Yes. But if the, if you well, can hook it up to the stones yeah, yeah. anyway. Yeah. 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 yes, it's the other way. Both ways. And that's just for until the, until we get the nice hard drive from hard drive from the IT people. We need to get. Yes, sir. How do you drive it? Sorry. How do you drive it? How do you drive it? The handle, yeah. The handle. That handle. The handle. That block. The handle's totally the wrong place. Uh, we have had feedback on this. <laughs> <laughs> and it's quite heavy. The so, yeah, I'm, I'm, so, it's just, heavy. so our next generation of microscope, they are actually turning that over. Yeah. 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 So, so when, whoopsies. when we get a fix for that, we'll, we'll let whoopsies. you know. Yeah. <laughs> what about the light? If it gets busted, the bulb. So just take it off and just turn around, no? It's a, it's a bar that runs all the way through yeah. one piece. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yes, how do you change the light bulb? The bulbs. So, the bulbs. Oh, the bulbs. Yeah. Bulbs. Very good. So that's something that even me would do. Yeah, but then we need to know as well where is it going to be done. Like? useless. <laughs> we just need, we need to know those things too, you know. We need to okay, DIY okay. sometimes. <laughs> so here, DIY, so here you you've I got, you've got two bulbs running at the same time. Yeah. Okay. So you've both got 500 hours. There's no levers to pull or anything like that. So you does it tell in? you, does it give you a pre-warning that it needs replacing? Yep, yeah, so it will tell you when, when it gets to about 100 nice hours. Week. When it gets to about 100 hours, it will, yeah. when you start it up, it will say you had X amount of time left. Where you go, you go into the settings, this little cog here. On this top where it says microscope, light tab, and this is where your startup um, light conditions are. So you asked about what the light settings will be when you turn on, about 25%. Yeah. Okay, so you've got two lamps starting yeah. at 500 hours. If you want to change the lamp, what you do is you click over, 
automatically rotates the, the tumbler okay. and then it will go on to, that's already changed over anyway. So yeah, so it will automatically change over, okay? And then to change back, to go back to bulb one, we'll try and run one bulb down at a time yeah. instead of having okay. bulbs going through. Yeah. Fine, perfect. Okie dokie. That's quite good now. But we can't physically change the light bulb, unlike no, no, no. No, so, so once, once, you, you. once you're down to about 100 yeah. hours on the second bulb, then you can contact the EBME to say yes. Okay. That's fine. So they need to check that though, isn't it? It doesn't come up with a pre-light or warning to say that first bulb is... Yeah, I, I, as, I, as I said earlier... No, it's only if you go onto that screen though. No, no, so no, when, no, you, it, when it, you start it... It pops up. <laughs> yeah, oh, when you start it up, it will come up to say you have X amount of hours oh, left. Yeah, yeah. Right. Very good, very good. Excellent. What's that tube called? What tube? Is that YouTube? Focal tube. My favourite. Oh, no, these are just your various settings that we do at startup. So okay. these are your... This is, this is don't the, touch. the geeky bit. <laughs> don't touch. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but if don't those get tampered, they don't, they don't reset themselves, do they, really? No, but it's... Is there a reset there'd be no, There'd be no it? reason to touch these. You'd, you'd have, to know, you yeah. have to know someone, what you're someone, doing someone to, someone to, if someone does to play some, around Just with by them. chance, get it off. Is there a reset button in there that no. I can touch? No. So that it will go back to... Uh, you all you have to do is start a new profile. Start a new profile and it will go back to... How do you charge the profile? Yep, so you go click on the name. I missed that bit. And then you press add. And then you just create whatever profile you want. And if you want to delete the profile, so if you want to delete the profile, you go to Nate. You go to the little pencil, highlight it, and then press delete. But you can't delete the active user at the no. moment, so you'd have to change the new user. Yes, yeah. delete. That's fine. Mm. Excellent. Any questions? So maintaining it. From the cleaning perspective, what do they use? Um, if you if you need to use anything up to eighty percent alcohol for the optics, um, okay. nothing um, only microfiber, so nothing that's going to leave filament. Never clean inside the optics; that'll be for us. But yeah. if you want to, if you have to clean the surface optic here, you're going to have eighty percent alcohol. Um, no soaps or anything no. like that. Screen. Green for now. Yeah. And the, the, the actual frame for now, fine. Yeah. 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 So yeah. a lot to clean, guys. A lot to clean. You're going to have to have an hour. Just this. Just this. Nothing else. No, canal as well. No, canal. Canal. Canal? Yeah. But not for the optics. No, not for the optics. So I just have to. Canal on the screen. Canal on the rest. No, because that won't evaporate. You can't clean the blubber. 